Okay, so what I'm talking about right now is going to be differentiating e to the x power. So to get an idea of our rule, I want to start off by differentiating both sides of this equation. Now, the first thing we have to remember um, is that we talked about the derivative of the natural log of x being 1 over x. So we're going to take this and apply it here because I've got a, a natural log of e to the x. So this will become 1 over e to the x times the derivative of e to the x. And then the other piece I have, let's get this out of the way, the other piece I have, this is going to be equal to One's just coming from, from our x right here. It's the, it's the derivative of the x. All right, so if I want, to, if I want to get the derivative of e to the x isolated, I will multiply both sides by e to the x power. So that's going to give me the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. And this is the rule that we're going to be using um, to evaluate the derivatives of, of e to the x. It's kind of a cool function. It's actually its own derivative. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And later we'll see that the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. It just, it matches. Um, so that leads us to our, our rules. And I've got the rules written out here uh, three different ways. One way is just the way that we found it. Derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. If you're going to use this rule to solve a problem, you have to actually use the chain rule. So, you know, say that this was, if this x was 2x plus 1, then your answer would be e to the 2x plus 1. But because of this chain rule, I've got to multiply by the derivative of the exponent, right, to, to get an extra 2 out here. You could also solve that same problem this way, using uh, some books, right, in, in terms of u. And so this, uh, this u, I've got dx right here and a, and an e to the u right here. So it's saying that this u is some expression of x. Like we could use the same one that we just used. Well, what this is saying to do is put 2x plus 1, again, right, e to the u, and then u prime, well, this would actually be our, our 2. Exactly the same answer that we had previously. And then uh, this last way, this is just how it actually goes on in my brain when I'm thinking of problems like this, is I'm just saying to myself, all right, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then I just multiply by the derivative of the exponent. And so, you know, it's just one more, one more way to have it organized in your brain when you're, when you're approaching these problems. Uh, so let's look at a few examples. Um, this is actually very similar to the one we were just doing, um, but whatever, we'll go through it anyway. So first thing I would do is just write it over again. So I'm looking for the derivative now, f prime of x is going to be e to the 2x minus 1 power. And then I would take the derivative of this piece here and multiply by t. And then the way I'd write this answer is just 2 times e to the 2x minus 1 power. Another one. A little more complicated derivative this time. Same idea from the beginning. f prime of x is going to be e to the negative 3 over x, and then times the derivative of this piece. So let's, um, let's think about the derivative of this really quick. This one here. Um, negative 3 over x is the same as negative 3 times x to the negative 1 power. And the derivative of negative 3 x to the negative 1 power is going to be positive 3 x to the negative 2 power. Or we could write this as 3 over x squared. So this is all just sort of our side note. Um, 
while we're thinking about this derivative. So coming back to where it fits into this problem, I'm supposed to multiply by the derivative of negative 3 over x. So that's my 3 over x squared that we came up with over there. Um, as far as how to simplify this or how to actually write your answer, you've got a few choices here. Um, one way you could write it is you could say you've got 3 over x squared times e to the negative 3 over x power. Or you could say you've got 3 e to the negative 3 over x power over x squared. Or really the only thing with a positive exponent is the 3. So the 3 would be alone on top, and on the bottom, you got x squared e to the 3 over x. Different books and different teachers are going to have different ways they want this answer written. As far as this class, I don't care. You pick any of those three that you want, and uh, I will be perfectly happy with it. Let's check out one more of these. Um, we'll kind of review the chain rule at the same time we, we look at this one. We have a, a double chain rule, I guess, going on in here. So I want to write this over again. Uh, let me actually write the problem again. I'm going to write f of x over again. f of x is e to the sine of 3x. So you can see there are three different pieces that I have in three different colors here. So, as with any e to the x problem, the first thing we're going to do is just write out our, our e to the x part. So this is now going to be f prime of x is going to be e to the sine 3x. Well, then in red there, I've, I've got the, the sine. I need to multiply by the derivative of sine 3x, which is going to be cosine 3x. And then in green here, I have one more piece. And so I have to multiply by the derivative of that 3x for my last step of the problem. And then I'm just going to simplify it, combine it, squish it, however you want to think of that. So I've got now 3 cosine 3x times e to the sine. Um, and then once again, you know, this is still a derivative, this is still a slope. So big picture wise, keep in mind that no matter how complicated this gets, if I gave you an x value like 3, you can plug it in here, you get an answer, and your answer would be the slope of the tangent line to this graph at the point, you know, at, at x equals 3. Um, so anyway, that's the idea. I hope that's making sense, and uh, thanks for stopping by. See you.